Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. I hope you're all having a really great day thus far, a fantastic Friday. And so of course we'll be taking a look at what is currently taking place across the Caribbean and we're also going to be uh, talking about one of the factors that will influence activity in the region this hurricane season which is the sea surface temperatures. And so of course before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update. Okay, and so as we take a look at the satellite imagery here, we can see that there isn't much happening across the Caribbean. Over the Western Caribbean, we see uh, some activity there, uh, not really consistent of a lot of showers and thunderstorms, but some convective activities dissipating over the Yucatan. As we go to the Eastern Caribbean, we're seeing a little bit of activity as well, but down in Northern South America, there we can definitely see all of that convection uh, across parts of Colombia and Venezuela and the those are likely inducing some showers uh, and thunderstorms, possibly even with some strong winds across some sections of those countries. And then as we look into the eastern Pacific, there we can see some convection as well. So overall for the Caribbean itself, there isn't too much happening. So most of us have woken up to some beautiful sunshine this morning. There isn't anything major going on. And uh, even for Trinidad, down in Trinidad, uh, where there was a lot of activity a couple of days ago, most of that has dissipated and we can see that things are pretty much clear in the region right now. However, as we head to the afternoon hours, uh, models are forecasting that sections of the Caribbean could receive a bit of rainfall activities. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And first up, we have the Euro model here and we can see that Euro is not expecting much rainfall across the region, showing a lot of that activity down in northern South America and over into the eastern Pacific, but uh, showing that sections of the eastern Caribbean sections of the Leeward Islands will likely receive some rainfall activity today. There is a trough uh, in the vicinity of those islands by the way so that could help to induce a bit of rainfall activity. Uh, some is also expected for Puerto Rico and Hispaniola but going over to the uh, western Caribbean we're not seeing where much is anticipated. Maybe just a little drizzle at the most but nothing major is anticipated and so as we look at the ICON model, uh, ICON is kind of in agreement it is showing most of those rainfall totals being a bit offshore of the uh, eastern Caribbean but still showing some rainfall within the vicinity of parts of the Lesser Antilles and also maybe a little bit of afternoon showers for Trinidad but nothing major is anticipated by the models here so a lot of that activity is taking place outside of the Caribbean region at this time and as a matter of fact I want to briefly talk about something else uh, in terms of the rainfall activity as we're going to be heading into the uh, coming weeks. So I'm going to be looking at that very shortly. But now we want to move on to the sea surface temperature anomaly map. As we head more to those shades of oranges and reds, that is indicating above average uh, sea surface temperatures. The white indicates that things are pretty much normal. Meanwhile, the blues indicate that there are below normal sea surface temperatures. But generally for the Caribbean region, we can see here that uh, those temperatures are above normal, slightly above normal for this time of year. In some places, such as the Leeward Islands, uh, things are pretty much normal and there are some spots of blues indicating that a little bit cooler than usual. But uh, generally for the region, we can see that it is above normal and uh, the Caribbean is located in the tropics which is a region that is warm all year round and so uh, when we're going to be having these above average temperatures that could really help to fuel tropical cyclone activity so when those disturbances make their way into the region uh, those above average sea surface temperatures can help to boost the shower and thunderstorm activity in association with the system. However, for this hurricane season, of course, an El Nino is uh, very much likely as we head into the latter part of this year, and uh, that will likely increase the wind shear across the region. So uh, even though we have those above average temperatures, and we're going to see this continuous warming because we're not in summer as yet, so things are going to get a lot more warmer out there. But 
even though the wind shear will likely inhibit a lot of development, once conditions are favorable enough with those above average temperatures, that could aid in some quick intensification of systems. And uh, even talking about other areas such as the Gulf of Mexico, that is a hot spot each hurricane season where we see at least one major cyclone. Uh, last year that was Ian. So uh, at least one major cyclone occurs in the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, it doesn't matter if this hurricane season might produce less activity than normal. It only takes one storm to really do some absolute catastrophic damage guys so please keep that in mind but of course i'm going to keep talking about all of these uh different factors as we progress closer to the hurricane season and now looking at the global tropics hazards outlook map here from the climate prediction center but we're focusing on the atlantic region where we have the caribbean and looking specifically for week two where we have may 3 to may 9 we see those shades of brown across the caribbean indicating below average rainfall so across most of the Caribbean during this time frame and also going to week three, which is May 10th to the 16th, we're seeing that below average rainfall is expected across the Caribbean region. So guys, that is what is going on. That is what is expected. And of course, I'm going to keep talking about all of this, as I said, as time goes by. And so I hope that you found this video to be quite informative. However, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. I will try to respond as best and as soon as I can. And of course, remember to always be weatherwise.